Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm sure many of you are acquainted with the differences that exist between British English and American English. And yesterday when I was taking a poll on my Instagram and Facebook stories where I asked my followers to suggest me some topics on which I can make a video in the future, one of the followers suggested that I make a video on the differences between English in America and English in the UK or English in the world versus English in America and most importantly whether the English that is there in America used in an Americanized way and in this context let me mention that by America I do mean the United States of America only but that style has been adapted in many other countries so in this video I will talk about whether the American style of English can be considered correct or not and what are the salient points of differences that exist between British English and American English. So, let's begin. This discussion needs to be started with a very important question. That is, who defines what is correct English? As you already probably know, English as a language started to develop after the Norman conquest of 1066 AD and through centuries the language has developed by borrowing its essence from languages like Latin, Greek and many others and it was spoken mostly by the people from Great Britain or the United Kingdom as it once was and after that when they slowly started colonizing the people outside their country the ones who stayed in the present United States of America the people who presently stay in India and many other countries in the world and that is how their language started to spread and slowly it became the universal language I'm sure all of you are already aware of this narrative but despite that when America was colonized which was in the early 16th through to the 17th century and after America got its independence in the year 1750 on the 4th of July, slowly the people of that country realized that if they continue to speak the language of their colonizers in the way in which it was intended, then they will in some ways admit to the fact that they once were colonized. So they decided that since there are enough English speakers in USA and in general in the continent of North America therefore they decided to change the English in very subtle but very definitive ways so that one can very easily identify that this English is not British English now the main reason why this English change came into being was not exclusively because they wanted to get out of the influence of their British colonizers but because they soon realized that the English which the British people spoke was a kind of English which had several loopholes in it. The pronunciations, the grammar, they were faulty at places which all of us who use English in the British way admit to and they wanted to get around it by creating their own sets of spellings and their own grammatical rules. Now the question is, can one do this with this language? Since this language originally belongs to the British, who are also called the English, which is surprisingly the name of the language as well, therefore the question which one has to ask is that when Americans did this, did it not change English completely? The answer is no, because they have just changed very few things in the language such as the omission of unnecessary vowels, the change of the letter S to the letter Z, especially when the pronunciation is closer to Z than to S, for example in words like civilization. They wanted to make their language more phonetic and easier for people to learn. Now in this context one has to understand that when Americans started to learn English it was solely because they wanted to communicate with their colonizers and not because they wanted to own the language. But with time and with centuries passing, with people like Ralph Waldo Emerson and Walt Whitman emerging out of the country of USA, they slowly understood that if they stick to this, then they can make their own identity despite their dependence on the language English. They did not change the language altogether, but they just modified it to a certain extent so that they can use it as well. 
Now, this brings us to the next point is that can any other country do this if they want to? Let's take the example of India in this context. India is a country with a huge number of people who speak English. I think if we draw some data from the internet, it will come to the conclusion that there are more people in India who speak English than there are in the United States of America. Therefore, if we wanted to, can we change English to an Indianized version? This reminds me of the words like chutneyfication which Salman Rushdie came up with or toasted English that R.K. Narayan used to call the Indian version of English. But the truth remains that to this day and age, Indian English is more aligned to the British system than to the American system. Though there are people in India who write exclusively in the American style following American rules of spelling and American rules of grammar. But most Indians, especially students who study in schools, colleges and universities are always advised to stick to the British spelling and not to the American spelling. The main reason behind this being that English is a language of the British and Americans have just adapted it to suit their preferences. So we are actually deciding to stick to the original. But if today we decided to Indianize the English by changing its spellings and grammars. Would that version be as globally accepted as American English is? As most of you know, even in handbooks like MLA, Chicago or APA, there is a specification where it says that if you are referring to British spelling, you can do that, but you have to maintain consistency throughout your paper. And same with American spelling, you can choose to do that, but you have to maintain your consistency throughout the paper. The reason why American English has caught up with the rest of the world is not simply because it's easy to understand, the spellings are more simple but also because America is a global imperial power and that country knows how to use its position in the global market of languages to ensure that the version of English that it uses is also used elsewhere. The main reason why no other country has managed to do this despite the fact that decades have passed since the independence of countries like India and many others where there is a huge number of people who speak English is because that most of these countries belong to the third world or the second world where we don't have enough power or enough importance in the global context. Therefore, I don't think any other country can do this in the near future. Now, let me come to the chief points of difference. The differences in spellings are very easy to point out. If you change your locale in Google Docs from British English to American English, you will automatically see the mistakes you are making according to American English and vice versa. The differences in spellings are well known and well accustomed to us because we are acquainted with the British spelling and by reading American fiction, we are also acquainted with the American spellings. The differences in spellings are mainly in the omission of the unnecessary vowel U in words like color, humor, the omission of extra letters, for example, at the end of the word program, which is spelled P-R-O-G-A-M-M-E -M -E in British English and spelled simply P-R-O-G-A-M in American. Another instance is the word analog, which is spelled A-N-A-L-O-G-U-E in British English and A-N-A-L-O-G in American. So with these examples, you can understand that the fundamental principle of American English is to spell a word as they see it and omit unnecessary vowels or in some cases unnecessary consonants as well as you saw with the example of program so that words are easier to remember for the children and for the users in general. But in this context, I will move to my fifth and most important point, which is the use of the double negative. The person who suggested that I do this video mentioned the book Color Purple by Alice Walker where the grammar is not like anything they had in, ever encountered in their lives and they had also mentioned that in this context their entire orientation of English got a very big shock when they read Color Purple and if you have not read it I would strongly suggest that you do it's a brilliant novel but the grammar there is quintessentially American but there is also something extraordinary about it that is it is african-american and african-american people who caught the right to exist in america as independent people after the emancipation act of 1865 by abraham lincoln 
slowly started to realize that they can't speak English in the same way as the Caucasian counterparts did. Therefore, their English is a little bit more raw and they tend to use the double negative a lot. They often combine two words to form a completely new word which doesn't even exist in the dictionary. They often change their grammar to suit their particular needs just so that they can express themselves better. So that brings us to that question that is this version of American English wrong? Well absolutely not. Most of them come from countries in Africa where their mother tongue was something different, probably Africans or Swahili in most cases and they learned English by listening to other people and only in their third or fourth generations did they get a chance to learn English formally through school, high school and then university. Therefore, it's not right for us to comment on a book like Color Purple and think that the grammar there is wrong. It is not wrong, just that it is different and that is the kind of grammar that African Americans used to speak in the 20th century and in many cases they do so even now and that is absolutely not wrong. So that is more or less it about what American English constitutes. If you want more such videos, please let me know. And if you have any questions, queries, doubts or comments, please don't forget to leave them down below. Also, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. I will see you in the next video. Till then, hasta la vista.